chart this stock, folks. Let's see what happens, at least from pre-market, because this will really kind of dig into our strat into our strategy in a nutshell. Bookmap looks like a mess here, looking after the market opened up. These are all the times it got halted. All these dots or, or every time virtually where it ended up getting halted and reopened up. It looks so messy. So we're actually going to go into that in just a little bit. Let's go into the pre-market first. And with that, you know, I wanted to go into a trade. Uh, I ended up uh, chatting with one of our students, unnamed, about this just from, from the morning. And they ended up having a little frustration on this stock at first from pre-market. Okay. So after this thing popped up as much as it did in pre-market, right away, I'm more inclined to follow the 50 cent levels and whole number prices, right? So 50 cents, $1, 150 $2, right? Just anything given this extreme of a pop-up this early in the morning, I'm just more inclined to do that, especially for a cheap stock like this. The more expensive it gets, then I'll be more inclined to just focus on the, the dollar levels, one, two, three, four, et cetera right? Now, with that in mind, though, well, hey, I would normally focus on a dollar anyway as a key level here. The fact that it shows on book map, the CVP column right here, you know, it shows that $1.99 or so is a price where we saw more volume get traded off of from this early consolidation than anything. So if our whole MO is to follow the big money, then we definitely know, looking at this, that $1.00 is a pretty big resistance. It needs to crack over a dollar pretty quickly or have that get flipped into support if, if I'm led to believe this will continue. That's my first thought. All right. So over time, it drops off. Now, here is where things get interesting. Let me ask us really briefly for Wayne and Grant and any of our students, perhaps you'd be more quick to answer this. But as a, as a new member or trial member jo joining us, uh, I feel more than free to participate too. Since I moved over the uh, image a little bit more to the right side there, uh, where do you have resistance showing now? What seems to be resistance now on this JSPR? We have a support right around like 95 cents, big iceberg order, kind of like being toyed with here on the bid. This is support. But where do we seem to have resistance? We'll dig into it a lot further coming up. We'll zoom in. Grant, Ravino, Wayne, yeah, like and Charles, right around that 104-ish, like just the orange, right? And, you know, hey, in terms of seeing this actually be resistance, well, the longer it's there, the more respect I give it. So it really is showing here at this point, this is like just about 9 o'clock, 8.48, 8.49. It's there for about 10 minutes. It's there for about 10 minutes, right? So, you know what? I'll respect that. That seems to be a pretty big level for right now on this trade. Seemingly, you know, it's trying to move up or holding under this price. So I'm led to believe at least going into the market open that my first big level would be 104, right around that 104, 105. I'll just move the line right there. All right. So what happened after? Well, the first test of that level, it quote unquote held it. It made a false breakout. It popped above it. You have a bit of a green spike right here on my trade station chart. Looks good, but came back down. Okay. Well, this is where we could at least begin to focus on core principles with buying a stock. And this could apply to any trade that is, you know, showing momentum to the upside. Um, but in terms of this specific trade here, we had a resistance at 104. Okay. Well, the question that we want to ask ourselves is, what happens if history repeats itself? I don't mean that in the sense of a false breakout and for it to pull back. Like, that's not what I'm referring to here. I'm referring to the buying. Because for every time that we see this break over 104, that resistance, we're seeing some good buying. So the issue on this trade this morning in pre-market, like why it was so tough after 8.30 at least, you know, it broke down from a dollar and moved back up, but we had this like iceberg at 104 and that was creating the resistance afterwards. So, you know, as soon as it really rebroke, keyword, rebroke resistance, 
Well, it ended up leading to a great squeeze afterwards, didn't it? So in terms of following the big money, I mean, this could be easy to say, but Bookmap clearly showed a resistance at 104, right around there, 104, 105. And it ended up leading to a nice pop. But here's one of our core philosophies. It's not just following the big money and following big icebergs, but what happens if history repeats itself? Right. I'm a cyber group member today. Just click the link below and receive all these amazing products and a world of knowledge for just $9. Do it today.